Hi, I'm here with Dr. Lisa Marie Rodi, who's the Deputy Director of Digital Initiatives at the CUNY Graduate Center, and with Dr. Matt Gold, Advisor to the Provost for Digital Initiatives, CUNY Graduate Center also. Thank you so much for hosting us and for your super interesting presentation. I'd like to start off with the question, if you could give a general sense to the viewers at home about CUNY numbers, what is it, what is it about, et cetera. Sure. Uh, CUNY is, stands for the City University of New York. Um, it's a public institution, uh, meaning that it is funded directly by the state and by taxpayers um, in, uh, in New York State and New York City. Um, there are 274,000 degree students across 25 campuses in all five boroughs of New York City. Um, within that context, the Graduate Center it is the house of all the doctoral programs. So we have faculty here at the Graduate Center who may be based at one of the CUNY campuses, but who come in and teach doctoral students here. And we also have a number of master's programs, including in areas like digital humanities and data analysis and visualization. Wonderful. So Lisa, could you let us know what the Digital Initiatives um, is about? Sure. GC Digital Initiatives is supported through the Provost's Office at the Graduate Center, and it is designed to create a digital GC, the idea that we are integrating technology in thoughtful, creative, and informed ways into our work as researchers, as scholars, as teachers, and providing a service to the city at large. So GC meaning uh, Graduate, graduate Center. Graduate Center, yes. <laughs> well, those of which are not as familiar with the abbreviations. <laughs> of course. Um, so could you maybe, you mentioned uh, research and teaching for one. Um, could you maybe give a few examples, um, you know, one of you, um, of activities which you do in that field to enhance and foster? Sure. So we offer a number of programs uh, through GC Digital Initiatives that support a range of learning uh, different kinds of technologies. So from week-long digital research institutes where students learn core and fundamental technology skills in order to build a research agenda, to individual workshops on particular technologies throughout the semester, to grant programs that fund student projects so that they can integrate the digital scholarship into their dissertations and research projects. Could you maybe, to make this even more concrete and tangible, mm -hmm. uh, name a few examples of what would, for instance, be the content of one of those uh, week-long workshops or an example for something which came out of the Accelerator program? Mm -hmm. So um, we begin, for instance, our Digital Research Institute Institute with a discussion of the command line. So trying to get students to approach the command line, the basic terminal inside the computer. And what we try to do in a lot of these workshops is to get um, our students and our faculty to approach technologies and platforms and not be afraid of them, to experiment with them. Um, so we really get them sort of practicing and using the, the terminal and really to feel empowered to, to start doing that. Um, we've had a wide range of projects come out of our initiatives, and we've supported a whole bunch of different student projects. Uh, one of the ones that um, we're very excited about is uh, by a student named Mickey Kaufman, who has a project called Quantifying Kissinger. Um, and what she's done is she's looked at the um, the memcons and telecons of Henry Kissinger during the Vietnam War and done all sorts of um, analysis of them. She's done topic modeling of the, uh, of the memos and telephone calls. Um, and then she's created all different ways to explore that data, which she's um, including 3D visualizations. And now she's uh, using virtual reality to explore the data sets themselves so that the, the uh, use of virtual reality becomes a space where you can actually navigate through the data and explore the visualization itself. Interesting. Thank you very much. I love from your presentation that community building is also very, um, very much at the heart of the initiative. Lisa, could you maybe speak a little to that? Sure. The idea is that we want our students and our faculty to understand how to find and to create support for one another and that that creates a kind of stability as they work, do their work here and as they move outward. So we build a, a kind of pedagogy that is reliant on um, students in workshops helping one another, learning how to ask questions of one another, and learning how to help each other um, as they are learning together. And then we continue that kind of approach through our working groups where we support uh, faculty and students um, sort of across uh, in, uh, uh, 
academic level to be able to introduce their own research questions and the challenges that they're confronting and support one another in trying to find solutions so that no matter where they go, they always have a time to work together. Okay, and in the context of digitization, is there an example of where, for instance, out of this one week long workshop, a community, a little group was formed using a particular digital tool for their work? Could you elaborate on that? Sure, so we have a mapping group, for mm -hmm. example, and out of the uh, work that the students have done to teach uh, QGIS, which is a mapping technology, in these workshops. They created a, a community um, called the GIS Working Group, mm -hmm. and they get together periodically to talk about advancements in mapping uh, technologies to share their projects, to share problems that they've come up with, and then to kind of find solutions for them. And students in those programs work across um, computer science and data visualization. They work in um, anthropology. They work in economics. They work in a variety of fields all of them confronting similar problems. So it's creating an interdisciplinary uh, community of practice where they share methodologies, even if they're not sharing the same uh, distinct disciplinary interests. And I would just say that they also use a, a platform that we have called the CUNY Academic Commons to meet together. Um, so we've, we have virtual spaces because of the nature of the CUNY system where people are distributed across campuses. Um, we need to have these virtual spaces mm -hmm. where people can get together and join and see past conversations and create new ones. So you provide the infrastructure as well as the, the input and, and the space. That's all been super interesting. In a nutshell, if there's one thing you want the viewers at home um, to take from uh, this interview, what would you think, in maybe one sentence each, is the thing you would most like to see transfer to Germany or you believe could mm -hmm. be something easily transferable? I would say that it's about supporting the people who are doing the work over the, the technology platforms themselves. In other words, creating and supporting the people who are going to continue to have the, the knowledge and to share it with one another is much more important than um, installing the newest and greatest uh, technology platform for them to use. And that's what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> something, something along Sorry. those lines, which is that we really have found that um, you know, what you need to focus on is people. You need to focus, because the technology is always changing, communities need to be able to adapt and to shift, and that what really matters is creating spaces where people can work together, where they can share their knowledge, where you're not instantiating a sort of uh, a, a, an older paradigm where uh, you know, the master is imparting knowledge to the pupil, mm -hmm. but rather where people are learning together and alongside one another. Um, it's hugely important, especially for technology, because you can learn so much better when you've got someone sitting next to you who's learning alongside of you, and where the things you're learning involve how to ask questions. Wonderful. Thank you both so much for your time and valuable insights. Thank, Thank you, you so much.